Hey everyone and welcome to this section and in this section we'll build out this student management system where we can manage the classes data, sections data and students data. So we'll start by building simple features like uh, managing the classes related data. We'll also look at displaying the relationships data and also the relationship counts. Then later we'll uh, work on this section resource so this is also similar to the classes resource and finally uh, in the end of this section we'll work on the student resource and later we'll also work on pdf generation we'll also look at generating qr codes and we'll also override the default login behavior in filament based applications and along with that we'll also work on defining a custom bulk action to export the student records so yeah we'll start simple and gradually uh, add in more features to this simple student management system and yeah we'll also work on implementing dependent drop downs as you can see in here and we'll also apply filters to our filament tables and not just simple filters but we'll apply these dependent filters where if we select any class and based on the class selected the sections are loaded from the database so yeah we'll be working on all of these stuff in the first section itself and i believe that you learn a lot of stuff in this section as well and this will act as a foundation for the upcoming section where we'll build out a support ticket system so yeah let's start by setting up laravel and filament and we'll work on these features as we move along so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one okay let's start by creating a fresh laravel project and i'm gonna be using composer for that and i'm also assuming that you already have composer php mysql and other stuff already configured in your computer since we are dealing with filament so i'm assuming that you have some beginner knowledge of laravel so i won't be diving into those stuff and you can find a ton of tutorials covering those stuff as well so yeah let's start by creating a fresh project composer create project the preferred distribution here is laravel slash laravel and i'm gonna name my project filament students management i'll just hit tab and hit enter and while this is installing i also want to give you some overview about the stuff that i'm using here so the terminal that i'm using here is called warp so you can go to warp.dev in case if you're wondering what terminal this is so yeah this is uh, basically available only for mac sorry for the other platform users i can't do anything about that but if you're using mac you can give this a try this is totally free for individual developers as you can see in here so many features for the individual developers and other stuff is okay i'm using a browser which is a really minimal browser as you can see in here this is called arc so you can go to arc.net so this is a modern browser and yeah, you can try this one as well and unfortunately this is also only available for mac as you can see in here i really can't do anything about this guys okay so yeah that was the overview let's look into our terminal and as you can see all this stuff is installed let's cd into the filament students management and let's open this up in our code editor okay let me fix some stuff in here maybe i'll try to zoom this a bit and okay let's start working on setting up our project so everything else looks good in here the only thing that i want to change here is this db database i'll just update that with filament students management i'll just copy this part and the db password here is root let me save that let's now go to our browser and i'll open up php my admin dot test in here the username is root the password is root let me save this password and i'll create a new 
database in here filament students management click on create and that's created for us okay that's done and okay let's also serve this pas here means php arts and serve let's create a new tab and let's go to the url okay that looks good let's also go ahead and install filament because i think we have some time so yeah let's go to a new tab and here i'll just type filament php docs 3.x panels installation hit enter and okay let's start installing filament i'll just copy this code and paste that in here command v composer require filament stable while that is installing let's also go ahead and copy this command and okay we don't have to do anything else in here that's done let's paste that command filament install what is the id yep the default is admin and all done i have already starred the repo and yeah that looks good let's also go ahead and create a new filament user so i'll just go ahead and okay type it in here php artisan make filament user the name is gonna be admin the email address is gonna be admin at the rate admin.com okay we have not migrated the database so i'll just go ahead and run php artisan migrate and now we can create a new filament user the name is admin email address is going to be admin at the rate admin.com the password is going to be password okay that's created let's now go ahead and log in and okay we need to go to slash admin slash login let's enter the credentials and hit enter okay so we are logged in so our filament installation is successful and in the next part we'll start working on defining the models migrations the seeders and other stuff so basically set up the database and later work on the resources and all the other stuff so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one okay it's time to work on our database setup and since we are building a students management system so yeah we'll be setting up the database for the students management system and before working on the actual code like building the models and migrations and all the other stuff i wanted to show you the database design of our students management system and i'm also going to keep it as simple as possible and if you learn these basics properly then you can probably go ahead and add new features based on your needs so here we have this classes table and there's a reason for keeping this name as classes because class is a reserved word in most of the languages like in php javascript and yeah that would create problems if you named our model as class so that's the reason we'll be keeping the model name as classes and also the table name as classes and this has id and name as its columns and you also have a sections table a section is going to have id a class id and a name and a classes can have many sections and a section will belong to a single class so this is how they are related and we also have this students table and the students table is going to have a class id and a section id to indicate where the students belongs to so this belongs to a certain class and a certain section it's going to have a name and email and we can remove this phone number so i'll just go ahead and remove that from here and by the way one more thing that i want to mention here is this tool is called db diagram and you can go ahead and look into this tool this is a really good tool for building out the database design you can code this from scratch so yeah, this is a really good tool and i've been using this for a while so once we are done with the database let's now go ahead and start defining the models so since we have already defined the database working on the code is really easy now 
so i'll just open up the vs code and let me just minimize this a bit i'll write artisan make model and we'll start by creating the classes model and we'll also create the migration file for this because we also want to work on the migration let's hit enter let's go to that specific migration file create classes table and this is going to have a additional column of type string with the name of name and we don't need to keep it nullable because this is the only data that we'll be storing in this and also like to keep these sorted so yeah, sort imports hit save and let's now go to that classes model and work on the fillable i'm also using github copilot to populate these rendered code so yeah that should be helpful as well let's sort these imports let's save that as well and let's now go ahead and define a new model for the section so I'll just go ahead and repeat the process section hit enter let's go to that migration file create section stable here this is going to have a class id table for an id class id constrained and a column for name let's save that and okay let's go to the model for the section let's work on the fillable protected fillable is going to have class id and name and okay we also need to work on the relationships so let's work on that method classes return this belongs to the classes model and the id is not really necessary in here section okay not actually classes but section belongs to a single class so this should be class and the id is not really necessary in here okay let's also go to the classes model and define the relationship in here sections and this has many section class and the foreign id here is the class id okay let's save that and let's also define the student model i'll clear it up and run the same process for the student model as well let's clear the terminal clear everything up from here as well and now go to that student model and we also need to open up the migration file create student stable let's go ahead and populate this one as well for an id class id constrained and okay for the constraint i think this should be classes okay that would work i guess but still it's a good idea to pass in the model name and this is obvious the plural of section is going to be sections let's also populate the column for the name for the email and okay we don't need anything else than these columns let's save that and let's also sort the imports save the file and let's go to our student model let's work on the fillable and i'm going to use github copilot a lot because these are also some basic stuff so i'm not explaining much stuff in here as well class id section id name and email and okay what else do we need in here we don't need anything else i guess that's done let's also go ahead and migrate these and also work on creating the cedar so yeah let's start working on the cedar actually so artisan make cedar and i'm gonna create classes cedar hit enter let's go to that classes cedar class and what i'm going to do here is i will create the cedars from here for all of the models and for running the cedars i think we'll also need the factories 
for the respective models so let's go ahead and create those as well because without creating the factories we won't be able to run the seeders and i'll let you know why would that happen so let's start by creating the factory for the class make factory classes factory that's done let's also create the same for the section and for the student as well student factory that's done and let's now work on this cedar and instead of writing this from scratch what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and paste the code and explain to you what each line of code does and okay one more thing before continuing on this is we need to work on the relationship on the student model so yeah let's also do that class this belongs to a single class and yeah this should be classes and the foreign id here is class id let's also define the same for the section this belongs to section and we don't need to pass in this because we are following the convention of laravel so yeah this should work let's save that and let's now work on this cedar so i'll just go ahead and paste the code for this and i'll explain to you what each of these line do but first let's start by importing these classes model section model this should be app models section and we also need this sequence class which is eliminate database elegant factory sequence and okay everything else looks good so we are starting out with the classes factory and we'll be creating 10 classes so for each of the classes what we will do is we'll, we can pass in a sequence which would manipulate the data for each of the iteration so we are passing in the sequence method which will take the current sequence and then pass in this data to that sequence and here what we are doing is we are passing in the name attribute and to the name what we are doing is we are passing in this class with a space and then on the sequence we are adding a value of one so this is basically a for loop and loops start with zero and what this will do is to the first item this will add one so the first item is going to have a class name of class one since this is adding number one to the index and for each of the items this would add one and eventually the 10 classes is going to have a class from class one to ten and we are using this relationship by passing in this has method and using the section factory and we'll create two sections for each class so since we are running a sequence so this will be created for each of the sequence so this has section factory with a count of two and we are passing in state so what this does is we can alternatively pass in data to this state and we are passing in a sequence where the first item is going to have a name of section a and the second item is going to have a name of section b and each section has the students data let me import this model and each section is going to have five students and again we are passing in the state passing in a function by grabbing the attributes and the current section that is being iterated here and for the student data what we are doing is we are passing in the class id which is the current section's class id and finally creating these records with this create method okay let's save this file and i also think that we also need to work on the factories because we are passing in so we are only passing in the class id and we need to populate other stuff accordingly so let's start looking into the student factory we don't have anything in here so let's go ahead and work on this as well and for this factory what we will do is we'll pass in the name and the email because we are already passing in the class id and the section id will be grabbed from this has method 
so we don't have to pass those but only the dynamic stuff we can populate that from this factory so for the name what we'll be doing is we'll use the faker helper and pass in the name and for the email as well we'll use faker and pass in a unique email for each of the record let's save these and let's give this a try so on the database seeder let's go ahead and run the classes seeder so we can call this call and we don't need these two because this is already covered in the classes seeder let's save this file and okay let's also remove this noise from here we don't need these let's save that and okay, let's also remove this let's save the file let's now go ahead and give this a try let me clear up the terminal artisan migrate fresh dash dash seed okay we have some problems in here factory create section set hidden call to undefined method okay section student okay we have not done that okay we don't have that so let's add the student method in here and a section can have many students so this should be students and return this has many student class let's save that and let's give this a try one more time php artisan migrate fresh let's just seed and okay the classes seeder executed successfully took 111 milliseconds so that was quick let's go ahead and look into the database i'll just refresh and okay we have these models let's go ahead and look into the classes table so we have class 1 to 10 so this seems good the seeder worked fine let's also look into the sections table we have section a b section a b for each of the classes so this also seems to work fine let's also look into the students table and here class id 1 section id 1 class id 1 section id 1 1 1 1 so yep these seem to work fine so our seeder executed successfully and i think that this video got a bit lengthy but i also hope that you learned some new stuff along the way about some seeding related tricks so in the next part we'll start working on our first resource for the filament project and that will be an interesting one as well so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one Okay, let's start working with resources in filament and talking about resources they are the building blocks in filament so uh, they can be used to build out our admin panel perform the crud related stuff and they can also be used to attach relationship related data define actions define filters and all the other stuff so we'll be looking at them step by step but first let's look into the documentation so on the panel builder page we have these resources section and as you can see in here we can perform all of these stuff from a single resource class so let's start by looking into the getting started page and we can make a new resource by using this command make filament resource and the idea behind working with the resources is to build crud interfaces for any of our eloquent models as you can see in here so these are basically static classes that can be used to build out CRUD interfaces and we can also perform other stuff that we'll be looking into one by one. So in this video, we'll be looking at defining a resource for our classes model. And these will basically allow us to create a new resource, edit the resource, list the details and perform actions on them like delete, apply filters and perform searches and all the other stuff so let's start by creating a new resource for our classes model so i'll just open up the terminal and start by typing in make filament resource and since we are attaching a resource to our classes model so i'm going to name this resource as classes resource hit enter and this will create a resource inside 
app filament resources with the name that we specified in here let's go ahead and look into this resource class and i also like to sort these imports and yeah we can perform a lot of stuff in here like uh, dealing with relation managers implementing soft deletes querying the data and all other stuff so we'll be looking into that but if we go ahead and look into this static variable in here which is a type of string and the model is the variable name and as you can see the model here is classes which is our model that we are attaching this resource to the navigation icon here is this hero icon uh, with the name of rectangle stack so this under the hood uses hero icon and the form is basically used to build out the form for the create and edit pages and the table is used to display the data and we'll be passing in our filament widgets and these are already installed in the filament package so we'll be populating these in the columns method and we can apply filters by passing in additional filters to this method and the actions are basically the operations that we want to do on these records and by default this includes the edit action and we can also perform bulk action in these records and this bulk action is wrapped inside a bulk action group and we're passing in this delete bulk action so by default we can perform bulk deletes on these records and we can pass in the relation related data inside this get relation method and the get pages method is basically passing in the routes for all of the pages like index create and edit we don't need the delete because we'll be passing that as an action so we don't need a page for that so yeah this is the general overview about a resource and in this video what i want to do here is i want to work on this form so we'll be populating this form based on the model attributes that we have so let's go ahead and look into the docs and here we have this form builder so since we are working with create and edit pages we want to build out the form i'll click on that and here we have all of these fields uh pre-installed with filament so we can pass in any of these based on our needs and since we only have a text input for the class name so we'll be using this text input widget so i'll just go ahead and copy this part and paste that inside the form schema array and but, uh, the name is the database column name and the text input should be imported so this is imported in here from the filament form component text input and now if we go ahead and save this and by the way this resource is automatically discovered by filament we don't have to do anything about this so this includes this classes resource and the pages that we mentioned in this resource so these pages will be created for us so if we go ahead and look into this classes then as you can see we have create classes edit classes and list classes and we can further customize these based on our needs and we'll be looking into these later so if we go ahead and reload our browser and let me switch the tab in here i'll open up our project and reload the page then as you can see we have this classes menu item appeared in here if we click on it then we won't see anything in here because we still need to populate our table method so we need to pass in the columns in here that's the reason we don't see anything and the edit action that you see in here is this edit action that we are passing in through the actions method by passing in an array and what i want to do here is i want to display the delete button in here itself if we go ahead and look into the edit page then as you can see we get this form and with the delete button as well so we'll be customizing that as well and what i want to do here is i also want to display this delete action in this row itself so i'll just pass in this delete action click on save and if i go ahead and reload on the index page then as you can see i get this edit and delete button in this row itself and if i want to remove this delete button from here then what we can do is since this is a edit page so we can go to this edit classes php class and here we have this delete 
action that is being passed through this get error actions method so i'll just comment this out click on save and if i go ahead and reload then i won't see this action so that's how filament php works in general these are all the building blocks that make up our admin panel starting with the single classes resource class and the helper classes which are create edit and list so we can customize these based on our needs okay let's go ahead and look into our create form and here yeah, now we can create any new class and click on create this would create it and by default we are redirected to the edit page and we can further customize this behavior but if we go ahead and look into the classes page then we don't see any data in here but we have 11 records so that record was created successfully and if we go ahead and look into our database i'm logged out so let me log in quickly and okay let me refresh this once and as you can see we have an id of 11 with the name of class 11 so this functionality is working fine and in the next part we'll be looking at displaying the data so we'll be populating this columns table and display the relevant data on the index page so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one okay it's time to display the classes related data and as we have discussed earlier all the stuff related to displaying creating editing and deleting will be done in this classes resource php class so we have this method called table and here we have a method called columns which is passing in an array and we can pass in multiple items to this and we can also apply filters we can pass in actions we can also define bulk actions so if you want to display a certain data inside the table then we'll pass that inside this columns method and let's also go ahead and look into the documentation and here we have multiple sections inside the documentation itself so this panel builder is basically the section for building out the panel customizing the layout and working with actions adding a form to a live our component so basically overall stuff is covered in this panel builder stuff and inside form builder as the name suggests this is basically used to build out the form on the create and edit pages the table builder is used to build out the table and display the data on the table the notifications is also a separate package and basically deals with notification related stuff the actions is also a filament package and this deals with defining custom actions bulk actions and other stuff and info list builder is also a separate filament package which is basically used to display data on a certain page so we'll be looking into these one by one and the widgets it's also a separate package and this consists of widgets like the dashboard widget and if you want to learn how the filament works under the hood you can look into this core concepts documentation and this also covers a lot of stuff and later we'll be exploring this as well when we build out our own custom component from scratch but in this video we want to cover the table builder since we are going to display the data on the table so this is a separate package but since we are working with filament so this comes installed into our package already if we go ahead and look into our source code inside vendor we have filament and as you can see these are all the individual packages actions forms info list notifications tables and widgets so these are the individual packages and combining all of these makes up the whole filament ecosystem so yeah let's start working on this columns method and we want to display the data so let's go ahead and look into the documentation and if you want to display uh, the data related to the text or string related stuff then we'll be using this text column i'll just click on this and we can use this text column to display the string related data so i'll just copy this part and go ahead and paste that in here and the text column should be imported and since i want to display the name of the class so i'll just pass in the name in this case 
and the name here is the database column name and the type here is string so that's the reason i'm passing in a text column click on save and let's go ahead and look into the browser i'll switch the tab if i now go ahead and reload then as you can see we get this name column displayed in here with the corresponding data from the database and we also get pagination already implemented for us so yeah this was the general overview about displaying data in the admin panel and if we go ahead and further look into the documentation then as you can see we have so many columns that we can display the uh, respective data for like icon image color select toggle text input checkbox custom columns co column relationships and advanced columns so we can even go ahead and customize these based on our needs and i think we are almost done for this video if we go ahead and look into our admin panel then we have name and we also have these custom actions that we can edit and delete these data so yeah in the next part we will be looking at displaying the section related data and we'll also work on the create and edit forms so i'll see you guys in the next one it's time to work on the section resource and if you have been following along in the previous lectures then this is going to be very familiar to you and i also encourage you to go ahead and try this out yourself before trying out with me because that would help you to build out your muscle memory and if you get stuck then you can probably follow along with me and complete the lecture and i'm assuming that you might get stuck in one of the problems that is displaying the relationship related data and we can do that by going to this column relationships section inside the columns header and here we have the column relationships so this section basically covers the stuff to display relationship related data and you can pass in the relationship name followed by the column name and this way you can display the relationship related data so yeah i suggest you to go ahead and try this out yourself and if you get stuck then you can probably follow along with me so let's now open up vs code and we'll start by creating a new resource as we have discussed already so i'll try to create a new resource and since we are going to display the data related to section so i'm going to name this section resource section resource hit enter let's go to that specific resource and most of the stuff will be populated for us like the model the icons and the form and the table is something that will be populating ourselves based on our database columns so here what i want to do is i want to first sort these imports and for the form what we can do is we can use text input from the filament forms components and the name of the column is name and we also need the class id in here so what we will do is let's go ahead and look into the documentation and here we have inside the form builder let's go ahead and look into the fields here we have a select component so we'll be making use of this the options here in the first overview section is being passed as an array so yeah that's one of the options and if you have an enum then this is something that we you would implement but if you want to grab the data from the database uh, then in that case what we can do is we can okay let's see what where is that option multi-select we can even implement multi-select so there's a lot of stuff in here and i encourage you to go ahead and read the docs so okay let's see so what we can do here is we can integrate this with an eloquent relationship so in this case a section has to belong to a certain class so we can pass in the relationship name and the column name so in this case the relationship name here is class and the title attribute is going to be name so yeah let's go ahead and copy this part and what i want to do here is i want to first render the select component and only then display this text input 
so let me go ahead and import this the column name here is going to be class id since this is something that we are referencing in the section table the relationship name here is going to be class and the attribute is name let's save that and let's now go ahead and reload if we go ahead and reload then we should see the section resource and if i click on new section then as you can see we get all of these classes so this is basically coming from the relationship and the relationship here is class and this should exist in the section model because we are currently dealing with the section model here if we go ahead and look into this model then as you can see we have this relationship configured in here and that's how this is being loaded so yeah we need these two stuff one is the class id and the other one is the name of the section let's go ahead and give this a try i'll try to create a new section for class one and the section is going to be section c click on create and we are redirected to the edit page so the data was created successfully if we go ahead and look into the database then we should see that click on sections and as you can see we have an id of 21 with a class id 1 and the name here is section c so yeah this thing is now working properly so the create and edit forms are working fine and just like we did in the previous video i want to attach the delete action in here so i'll just remove this part and attach the delete action in here and what i also want to do is i want to remove the delete action from the create page okay not on the create but on the edit page so i'll just comment this part and okay instead of commenting this what i will do is i'll just remove this whole part and i'll also do the same for the classes edit classes page let's save that and let's now go ahead and look into this if we go ahead and reload then we should not see that button okay and let's also go ahead and display the section related data on the table itself since this is something we have covered already and you already know where we need to populate this so on the section resource we need to populate the columns method and here we can pass in the text column with the name of name and okay filament table columns text column what's the problem in here okay let's see the classes resource and the table here has text column make name and filament table columns text column okay but i'm still getting that error okay let's try to re reload and call to our define function filament resource text column okay i made a silly mistake here this should be make and i also want to display the class related data so what we can do is we can basically use text column i'll just copy that and since i want to display the class related data and the relationship name here is class so we can pass in the class relationship and the column name is name and i want to display this as a badge but first let's look into this so the class here is class one and you can display this as a badge by passing in the badge method save that and if we go ahead and reload then this is displayed as a badge and this is generally useful in cases where you have multiple relationship data to be shown like on the classes table if you want to display the sections data then you can display them as a badge and yeah this could be also applied to displaying tags related data so yeah that's all up to you how you want to customize this and yeah i think we are almost done for this video as well we display the sections related data and in the next part we'll be looking at displaying the students related data so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one okay it's time to work on the student resource 
and in this video we'll be looking at displaying the students related data since we already have the data in our database which we generated through the seeders so we'll be looking at that and as we have discussed earlier a resource is generally used to manage a model related data so to list edit create and delete and also to manage the relationships perform filters and a lot of stuff that we'll be looking into one by one so yeah let's start by creating a new resource and this is going to manage the data related to the student model so we'll name this thing student resource and based on the name this is going to automatically assign the specific model and other stuff so yeah let's go ahead and hit enter and let's now go to that specific student resource and let's start by sorting the imports and as you can see in here the student model is automatically populated and the navigation icon here is this rectangle stack and we can change these by looking into the docs and we'll be doing that later and here we have the form and the table so we'll be looking at this form in the later videos since we will also work with validation and also implement dependent drop down so this will take some time but let's start by displaying the data so on the table what i want to do is let's first look into the migration file create students table here we have the class id section id name and email okay let's start by displaying the name and text column is responsible for displaying the name okay we have that text column here filament tables columns text column make and i want to display the name of the student and i also want to make this searchable and sortable so i'll hit tab this is going to be populated by copilot automatically and i also want to display the class related data so what we can do here is okay let's start by displaying the email first and we can also make this searchable and sortable and let's now work on displaying the relationship related data and this is also something that we have discussed earlier and by repeating these stuff again and again this would help you to build your muscle memory so let's start by displaying the class related data so text column make class dot name and you can pass in the label as a second parameter and okay let's pass in class i think this doesn't really work let's go ahead and look into this make and this only accepts name so we don't have to pass this okay i think we can pass this as a label let's see whether we have that method yep we do have that so the label here is gonna be class but i don't think we have to pass this as well because the relationship name here is class so that would be grab from the relationship name so let's first start by removing this and if it doesn't work then we'll fix this later okay let's save that and let's go ahead and reload our browser on the sections table okay let's reload and we should see a new resource called students let's click on it and we have the class data Let's also go ahead and display the section data and I wanna make this as a badge. That would make it look pretty. And I'll just copy that and here display the section dot name. Save that and we only have name, email, class ID and section ID. Okay, let's save that and let's now go ahead and reload. And as you can see, we have the class data being displayed here. Class one, section A and yeah this was really easy we also have implemented the searches and we can even search through the relationship data so let's start by making this searchable and let's reload it once okay this should be a method save reload and if i search by class one then only the class one related data should be displayed in here and okay this is going to be a search where the string is going to be matched with this search item so instead of re uh, returning just class 1 this is also going to return class 10 and class 11 because that's how searches work 
so we also have page two where this is returning class three as well okay so yeah this is not really accurate in this case because this is searching by passing the like mysql parameter so yeah this won't be much reliable in this case but if we search for class 5 then we only see class 5 but we also have class 1 and 3 because these have 5 and yeah because these have strings 5 in here so these are being searched individually from all of these texts so yeah that's how searches work and i think we are almost done for this video we have displayed the students related data in the next part we'll be looking at the create and edit forms we'll also implement validations and in the later video we'll implement dependent drop down so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one it's time to work on the create and edit forms and we implemented displaying the data in the previous video so yeah let's start by populating this form method and whatever we populate in here is going to be displayed on both the create and edit page so first let's start by displaying the name so a name is a kind of a text input so we'll be making use of the text input filament component text input make the column name here is name and what else i want to do in here okay let's also implement some validations in here so one of the main primary validations is the required validation so i'll just pass that in and for some reason i'm getting this yellow warning text column okay this is not imported i guess so let's go ahead and import it let's save that and let's now go ahead and reload on the create page we should see the text input for the name and if i hit on create without typing anything the validation should take place click on create and okay the html5 validation is executed first so the browser validation is executed first and then the server side validation is executed so that's a good thing and okay let's now go ahead and implement the same for the email i'll just copy this part and type email in here and for the email what we want to do is we want the unique email for each of the record so i'll pass in the unique validation in this case and whenever the form is loaded i want to auto focus this first form field so what we can do is we can pass in the auto focus method let's save that and let's go ahead and reload and now as you can see the name form is automatically focused i'll try to type in some name and okay let's start by copying a email so i'll just click on edit i'll copy this email to ensure that the validation is working fine and click on new student some the email here is already on the database so we should see that validation in action click on create and now as you can see the email has already been taken we can even customize the message and further customize the validation by passing in a closure so we'll be looking at that as well later when we have to implement validation for the sections so we'll be looking into that but for now we'll keep it simple okay so we have the name and email we also want to add the form for the class and section so we can do that as well for the class what we can do is we can pass in the select component select make and okay let's go ahead and look into the section resource because we implemented something like this in here as well select make class id relationship name here is class okay i'll just copy this part and paste that here and we want to store the class id on the student model the relationship with the student here is class and the column name is name and we don't need these but it's always a good practice to pass in named parameters where there are multiple parameters being passed so yeah this looks good and let's also do the same for the section id but okay let's 
go ahead and look into this for now but we we need to customize this based on the selected class so yeah, i'll just comment this out for now and we'll work on this in the next video because we need to implement dependent drop down and based on the class selected we will be populating this field so yeah we'll be looking at that later let's save this for now and let's go ahead and reload the class should be loaded automatically the name and email are working fine and this should apply for the edit page as well as you can see the class is automatically selected in here the name and email are also automatically populated okay that's it for this video and in the next part we'll be implementing dependent drop downs in filament and we'll be finalizing this create edit flow so i'll see you guys in the next one okay let's implement the dependent drop down functionality and in the previous video we did implement this so this is not fully functional and we need to make some changes in here so let me just go ahead and uncomment this first so the select make section id so this is the column uh, in the database that you want to store the data into so this looks good but what i want to change here is i want to remove this relationship because we won't be getting the data from the database so what we can do instead of that is we can pass in an options so this is something that i showed you in the previous videos so we can pass in an array and inside that array we can pass in an enum or an array of data so let's go ahead and look into the documentation first let me switch to that documentation so inside the form builder inside the advanced form page we have a lot of stuff that will help us work with these kinds of scenarios so what we can do is we can inject getters or we can inject setters as well to set some fields based on some conditions like uh, to implement slug based on a certain field so we can use setters we can inject the current form operation but in this case we'll be making use of this getter to get the class id and based on the selected class id we will be fetching the data from the database uh, for the sections related data so what we can do is let's first look into the options array so here we have this options and we can pass in an array of options to this so i'll just copy this part and paste that in here okay this has double arrays now so i'll just undo that and remove this array and paste that here save that file let's go ahead and reload that in the browser if i click on reload again okay, method select option does not exist select make okay i think this should be options save that reload and now as you can see we have a section id and these are all the options that are available to us so this is something that we passed in an array and i want to change the label to section and instead of options what we can also do is we can pass in a function to this and we can inject the getters or setters in here so yeah, i also want to show that documentation first so here we have reactive fields on blur Form component utility conditionally hiding a field injecting multiple yeah injecting the state of another field so what we can do is we can use this getter to get a value from another field so we will be making use of that so i will inject the getter here and i'm going to name this get let's import this getter and we can pass in the function body in here so what we will do here is we'll get the class id with the help of this getter get class id and let's do one thing let's log this data so steps like these help us to debug our workflow properly and okay let's give this a try this is not going to work yet because we need to make our select component reactive that is the wire model dot life under the hood it's going to use that 
uh, and that would watch for any property changes in this method so yeah let's go ahead and first grab the log file and let's clear that up laravel.log i'll just remove everything from here and let's now go ahead and reload the browser here if i click on class one then we should see that data being logged in here but we don't see anything as you can see we have an empty value in here so to make this thing work what we need to do is we need to make this thing reactive and we can do that by passing in live let's save that and let's give this one more try if i click on class one and now if we go ahead and look into the log so as you can see the value one is being logged in here so that's probably the value of this select component the label is class one and the id is the value which is one so now what we can do is we can check if we have the class id and the options array what this expects is this expects an array of data so here what we can do is we can return section where the class id is this class id and we want to get the data and then plug the name and the id from that collection okay let's save this and instead of doing this what we can also do is we can plug the name and the id and then convert that to an array this would be a bit more efficient because get would get all of the results into the memory and then convert that to an array but what this will do is this will only plug the name and the id and finally convert that to an array so yeah there's a difference let's save this and let's now go ahead and give this a try so if i select so we don't have any data in here for now if i select class one then as you can see uh, we added section c uh, to class one in the previous video so section a b and c are being loaded dynamically from the database based on this value selected if i select class 11 then we won't see any sections because we don't have any section data for this specific class if i select class 10 then we should see section a and b so yeah this dependent drop down functionality is now working fine and this should also work on the edit page as well let's go ahead and give this a try class 1 section a and yeah as you can see class 1 is being selected section a is also selected and we also have section b and c which indicates that this is the right data that has been loaded in here so yeah this thing is now working fine let's give this a try let's try creating a data and i'll select section c some name some mail at the rate email.com click on create the data is created successfully and they are also populated on the edit form so yeah this thing is now working properly so in the next part we'll be looking at defining a custom action to export the student's data so we'll be making use of the laravel excel package and define a custom action to export students data so that's also going to be an interesting one and i'll see you guys in the next one okay in this video we'll be looking at implementing a custom bulk action and in that action what i want to do is i want to let the user export the selected records to a excel file or that could be anything based on the user requirements so yeah if we go ahead and select these records and as you can see we get this action group and if we click on it then we'll see that we can delete these records and what I want to do is I also want to add a custom bulk action that will let the user export the selected records and we'll be making use of a package called mat website excel this is the official site of that package so let's start by installing this package first not about exports but yeah let's go ahead and look into the documentation and click on the installation page let's go ahead and copy that command and paste that inside vs code composer require mat website excel 3.1 and if we 
get any issues then we can simply try installing it without specifying the version and okay we don't have to do anything else okay seems like the package was installed successfully and to define a custom action what we are going to do is since we are on the student page and we want to add a bulk action in this resource so we'll be adding that in the student resource so below the delete bulk action what i want to do is i want to define a new bulk action so the namespace here is filament tables actions bulk action make the name here is going to be export so this is the key and i also want to pass in a label called export records the action here is going to be okay so inside the action what is going to happen is we will receive the collection of records inside a function the collection is going to be an eloquent collection so i'll just import that from the eliminate database eloquent collection and we'll name the variable as records and here what we can do is we can return new students export we have not defined this class yet and we'll pass in the records to this class and we can call the download method by passing in the excel file name so in this case it's going to be students.xlsx and yeah this should be ended with a semicolon okay let's go ahead and define this student export and the way we can define a new export in a excel package is by calling artisan make export students export make sure to match this name with this class hit on enter let's now go ahead and import this class and we should not see this error now let's see maybe i'll try to look into the syntax i'll save this and we do have some errors in here new students export we are passing in the records and this is this class is not actually receiving the records in here okay let's see students export have export student export but we are not getting the auto completion here okay let's try to see what the error here is Synx syntax error unexpected token okay i think this should be wrapped inside brackets and student export is already imported and okay now we are getting that auto completion so let's go to that specific class and instead of collection this is gonna be a uh, from query let's import that and this should implement that query method now as you can see we uh, got rid of that error let's define the constructor as well so that we can receive the collection of records through the constructor so let's type hint the collection which is a type of eliminate database eloquent collection of records and okay what we can also do here is we can use the constructor property promotion of php so we can probably do public collection records and we don't have to do anything here so now we can directly access this records and what i want to do here is i want to dd this uh, records collection okay let's go ahead and give this a try we don't need this form collection and the stuff that i'm doing here is all available in the documentation if we go ahead and look into the documentation exports from query so okay, this should also implement this exportable trait so let me go ahead and do that import the exportable and yeah from the query we can return the query and on the action we are passing in this new invoices export we're passing in the download method as well we can customize the query 
and yeah this is also passing in the constructor just like we are doing and yeah there's a lot of stuff you can go ahead and look into it but for now we are almost done with our code uh, and we do need to make a few changes here but yeah we'll make that so we have a collection of records and i also want to pass in a custom icon to this to make the ux a bit better this is gonna be hero icon or download i think it's called document download let's save that and let's also save this file let's go ahead and give this a try now control tab click on reload okay as vg name document download from set hero icons not found okay let's go ahead and look into the documentation of this as well this is currently using hero icons latest icon library so yeah let's go ahead and look into that document let's search for the document okay document arrow down this is the one i think let's do that okay let's go ahead and pass that document arrow down i'll remove the remaining part save and let's go ahead and reload click on reload okay and if i select multiple records we get this export records action and we also have that icon i think we can also change the color of the icon so let's also try that icon color okay we don't have the icon color we don't have that okay let's keep it like this and if i click on export then we should see this code being executed uh, that is this dd so yeah let's go ahead and give this a try and okay we get 10 records which are all of type student model and we get all of these records here so yeah this thing is working fine okay let's finally go ahead and run this so on the query what we want to do is and okay i think instead of passing in this query we can directly pass in collection because we are already getting the collection of records so it doesn't make sense to again query the database and then convert that to an array so yeah let's go ahead and do that i think that would be better so let's look into the documentation we already have the collection exporting collection so we can implement this from collection and return that collection and since this query is already executed so yeah we can directly return that from this method so i'll just copy this part and instead of from query this is going to be from collection and instead of returning this what i want to do is i want to return this records okay let's format this properly let's save that and let's give this a try switch to the specific tab click on reload select these records export selected records and yeah that got downloaded but how do i look into this okay can i view this thing okay so we are getting these records and i do have a app to view these excel files so yeah this seems to work fine you can go ahead and format the data properly you can pass in this data and format them properly that's all up to you how you want to do it but yeah this thing is working fine maybe i'll look into this later but for now i just want to end this here and the main idea was to show you how to implement bulk record exports and also show you how to implement custom actions so yeah that's it for this video and in the next part we will be looking at applying filters so yeah filter the data based on a certain class or a section so we'll be working on that in the next video okay it's time to implement the filters functionality in our tables and talking about filters as the name suggests they allow us to perform certain filters in our data tables based on a certain constraint or a scope and the most fundamental form of filters is the boolean kind of filters where the data is filtered based on a certain truthy or falsy value 
like in this case here we have a filters feature where the data is filtered based on uh, whether the item is featured or not and this can be in any form like published or not published so based on a certain truthy or falsy value but yeah this is the most fundamental form of filter and we can further customize these based on based on our needs and yeah we'll be looking at further customizing this in this video itself so yeah we'll be looking at not just applying filters but also implement the dependent drop down that we did in the previous video and basically apply the filters and also implement the dependent drop down in the filter process itself so yeah let's go ahead and look into the process so we can pass this filter data into this filters method so yeah i have probably shown you in the previous video so we have many methods that we can apply in this resource so the columns is used to display the data in the table this is used to apply filters the actions are the operations that we can perform on individual records and bulk actions are the actions that we can perform on multiple records by selecting them and then we can perform these bulk actions on those multiple records okay so let's go ahead and start working on the filter functionality and what i want to do here is let's go ahead and look into the docs i don't want to implement this simple filter functionality where the filter is applied based on a certain truthy or falsy value but what i want to do is i want to pass in a form to this filter and in that form method i want to pass two form fields for the class and section id and we'll be filtering the data based on those classes and sections so let's go ahead and look into that so let's start by passing in this filter method filter make i'm gonna name this class section filter and i'll be passing in a form to this but let's start by importing the filter class which is inside filament tables filters filter and that way we'll get auto completion from the id as well so here we can pass in a form as you can see we have this form method and inside this we can pass an array of data okay so let's start by passing in a select component select from the filament forms components select make class id and for some reason i'm not getting this bracket completion from my id i'm not sure what's happening here but yeah let's work on this select make class id and i want to pass a label to this so the label is going to be filter by class and the placeholder is going to be select a class and for the options what we will do is we'll just query these from the database so for the options what we are going to do is we'll just get the classes data classes we want to pluck the name and the id and then convert that to an array and okay we need also need to import the classes model so yeah since uh, options expects an array so we pluck these data from the database and then convert that to an array okay let's save this and let's go ahead and reload okay so i'm on the students resource and the filter that we applied is in this resource so let's reload and we should see the cylinder icon being shown in here because we have enabled the filter functionality if i click on it then we see the label as filter by class and if i click on this then we see all of these data from the database okay we still have an issue where if we go ahead and select any of the class then the filter is not actually applied because we have to modify the query that has been executed when we run that filter so what we can do is we can pass in a custom query to this so i'll just copy this part and paste that along with this form method so i'll paste that here 
and yeah we need to import this builder which is eliminate database eloquent builder and this should return the desired query that we want to run when this filter is applied so what we can do here is instead of passing in this arrow function i want to return a normal function here so i'll replace that with a normal function and this should be implemented like this so i'll just copy this part and cut that paste that here and return this this should end with a semicolon and now it looks good i'll just save this and what we can do here is while we are injecting this function builder query we can also inject an array of data to this so okay let's go ahead and debug this what we get in this data in our log and for some reason we are getting an error argument one pass to info is expected to be of type string array given so what we can do is we can access the values of this array so what this actually represents is our form state so the array of data is basically this form data so we are accessing the class id through this data array and logging that in our log file so let's save this and i also want to access the log file i'll just remove everything from here save it and okay let's give this a try now let's reload once column not found column is featured in where clause okay we are returning this so yeah let's comment that out and maybe we might get an error again because it is not actually returning a builder so i'll just remove this return type for now and reload and okay i also need to clean this log file and let's go ahead and reload now okay the class one is selected let's go ahead and look into the log then as you can see class one is being logged in here so we are successfully grabbing the data that is currently being selected in here so what we can do here is okay let me just undo this uh, flow that i just commented out and now what we can do is we can check whether the class id is present uh, in whether the class id is selected in this form and based on that we can run this query so here what we can do is query when class id is selected data class id is selected in that case i want to run the query and we can pass in the query in this function and we can also pass in the class id but let's implement it like this for now so we can return the query where the class id is this class id and okay we also need to use this so let's use that so we are basically scoping this variable to be used inside this function by calling this use data we are basically scoping this inside this function okay let's go ahead and reload and now as you can see only class one related data can be seen here so the filter is now working properly and okay let's go ahead and give this a try class two and okay only class two related data can be seen here so this filter is now working properly and along with this what i also want to do is i want to implement dependent drop downs so instead of only passing in the class i also want to pass the section related data so i'll just copy this whole part and pass section id as well the label is going to be filter by section select a section options are going to be okay instead of passing in an array we can pass a function to this and let me get rid of this so we can pass a function here 
and this is something that we have covered in previous video i think while implementing the dependent drop down so we can use the getter and get the class id from the getter helper and we can now check if the class id exists if it does then we will return the section where the class id is this class id block the name and id and convert that to an array okay let's save this and let's go ahead and check this out let's reload and okay this functionality is working fine so i'll just remove this whole filter from here and now try to apply this select a class class one and the section related data is automatically populated here so yeah, this thing is working and we also need to update the query accordingly we haven't done that so the filter won't work properly so when there is class id then we will return this and we can again append the when to this query in here so when we have section id and maybe i'll just copy this whole part and paste that here when we have the section id then again we want to append this query to this original query okay let's save this and let's reload and for now we are not selecting any section so we see data from section a and b if i now go ahead and select section a then as you can see only class one and section a data are rendered here so yeah this is something that i wanted to implement and this could be a bit challenging to you as well while you are in the process of learning filament so these problems are a bit hard to tackle and looking at the documentation can be a bit confusing sometimes so yeah i hope that this was helpful and in the next part we will be looking at displaying the students count and also display the sections related data on the class resource so that's going to be a simple one and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one okay in this video we'll be implementing some basic stuff i'm calling these basic because we implemented something interesting in the previous video so in this one we'll be looking at displaying the sections related data on the classes resource and we'll also display the students count on the respective class and the section resource so yeah let's start by displaying the sections data on the class resource so here we have the classes resource and i want to display the sections related data on this table so if you want to display it on the table then we can populate our columns method so here what we are going to do is we'll just display that using this text column because they are text and we can use this to display text related data and what we can also do is we can pass in the relationship name since this is something already supported so this also supports the relationship related data so let's save this and if we go ahead and reload then as you can see uh, the section related data is automatically displayed in here separated by a comma so it basically converts that to a collection and joins them by comma so what i want to also do here is i want to display them as a badge because displaying them as a comma separated value doesn't look so good so we can pass in this helper called badge and if i save this and reload then as you can see they now look pretty and this also indicates a good ux so let's also do one more thing that is i want to display the students count in here uh, that is how many students belong to a certain class so that's also pretty simple so to do that what we can do is we can make use of this text column component itself and the name here is gonna be students count and we have this helper function called counts and we can pass the relationship name in here and in this case the relationship name is 
students let's save that and i want to append this on a new line if we go ahead and reload okay call to undefined method i have model classes students so we have not set up the relationship yet let's go ahead and do that okay we don't have that so i'll just define that relationship here this has many student class and the foreign key is class id so let's save this and let's reload okay now as you can see this thing is working fine and we can even use the badge helper in here to make things pretty so yeah let's give this a try let's see how this looks save that and let's reload okay that looks good okay i think we are almost done for this video as well and on the sections as well we can display the students related data so yeah you can go ahead and do that i've shown you how to do it and okay, i'll just copy this and paste that on the section resource paste that here let's reload and okay this looks good so yeah that's it for this video and in the next part we'll be looking at showing badges changing the navigation icons and grouping these navigation items so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one okay in this video we'll be looking at changing some default stuff from our navigation menu so what i want to do here is i want to change these icons and i also want to group these items into a group called academic management and i also want to show a count of students as a badge in this menu so let's go ahead and look into that how we can achieve that so here we have the student resource and this time what i want to do is instead of showing you the documentation i want to show you the underlying class and teach you how to read the source code of the underlying class and there may be scenarios where all of the features may not be covered in the documentation because there's so many stuff filament offers so reading the source code will help you to broaden your understanding and also teach you how this code is structured under the hood and how everything is organized so let's go ahead and look into this underlying class called resource and as you can see we are already getting these underlying variables breadcrumb is discovered is globally searchable and by default these are true and some are null some are set to false so we have this navigation group variable and by default it is null and we can override this variable since this is all object oriented programming so we can override this on the parent class and it would be read from that parent class instead of the underlying base class so let's go ahead and override that on the student resource here below this navigation icon i want to pass this navigation group and i'm going to call this academic management and i'll just copy this string and paste that on the class resource save that and i'll also do the same for the section resource let's save these and let's go ahead and reload and as you can see these are grouped into this academic management sub menu so yeah that's one of the features that i wanted to implement and let's also go ahead and change the icon of the students and i want to give this student resource hero icon o academic cap let's see whether we have this icon because previously when i used it it existed in version one not sure whether that exists in version two this seems to work so yeah this is a relevant icon for the students and the last thing that i want to do in this video is i want to show a badge with a total number of counts of students in this menu itself so that would give an idea about the number of records that are available in the database so yeah let's go ahead and look into the underlying source code 
in this case as well so i'll just open this resource and okay we have a lot of stuff in here you can override the slug and yeah there's a lot of stuff going on in here i can't really cover everything but okay let's see sub navigation position table can authorize check policy existence skip authorization can view any candidate these are all the authorization related stuff get eloquent query scope eloquent query to tenant okay where's the stuff that i'm looking for okay maybe i'll just search for it because i can't really get that get navigation items and we also have a uh, get navigation okay let's see label group icon okay we have this get navigation badge so i'll just click on it and by default this is returning null so i'll just go ahead and override this on the student resource and i'll just place that here and what we can do here is we can pass the total number of items that are currently available in the database but first let's start by passing any dummy data let's say 60 and if we go ahead and reload then as you can see we get this record displayed here so instead of this dummy data i want to display the total number of records that are available in the database so yeah that's all up to you how you want to customize this you can even uh, query the data and display this data dynamically so what i will do in this case is we have this model variable defined in here which is a type of static variable so we can access that here by using this static keyword and we can reference that model and this would return us the model instance and we can pass the count of that model so this would basically get count of the records from the database and you can perform query in here as well just like we do in a regular model so yeah let's go ahead and reload and now we should see the total number of records and okay i think we are almost done for this video as well and in the next part we'll be looking at customizing our dashboard so yeah that's also gonna be an interesting one and i'll see you guys in the next one okay it's time to look into some widgets that come pre-installed with filament and they are mostly used to display some data like the total number of records or show some latest records on the dashboard so we'll be looking at that but let's first look into customizing this default behavior on this dashboard page as you can see we have this welcome admin with the button of sign out we have this filament related data so yeah we can customize this as well by going to the admin panel provider that comes with filament so we'll be looking into this as well one by one and i'll explain to you what each line of code does so let's first start by sorting these imports because i like to keep them organized and here uh, the admin panel provider is the default panel provider because we only have one panel installed by default and here as you can see this is returning this panel which has been injected in here as a dependency injection and this panel is a type of filament panel and we can further add uh, more panels to this and we'll be looking at that later but first let's look into this class and i'll explain to you each and every line of code and this default method here indicates that this is the default panel the id here is used to, to uniquely identify this specific panel the path here is admin which is this path as you can see in this url and the login method indicates that uh, the login functionality should be enabled for this panel and we can pass in multiple colors to this but only a primary color is been passed which is this amber color and the resources here means the resources that we are creating 
all this file like the student resource section resource class resource and this method indicates that the resources should be discoverable in the filament resources path and discover pages so all the pages should be discovered in the filament pages directory and the default page here is this pages dashboard class which is this class as you can see in here and the widgets should be discovered in the filament widgets directory and these are the two widgets that are passed as a default widget for the dashboard and if i go ahead and comment these out i'll save this and if i reload then i won't see any widget in here because I've disabled the default widgets and these are all the middlewares that are applied to this panel it includes everything like the encrypt cookies session related authentication related and the default auth middleware here is this authenticate class so yeah these are the basic stuff and we'll be looking into these later when we define our own panel so yeah you'll get a deeper understanding in that lecture as well and i hope that you got some idea about how this panel works and okay let's go ahead and define a custom widget and display that here so let's go ahead and look into the documentation and on the panel builder page we have this dashboard section and here we have the available widgets we have stats overview widget we have chart widget we have table widget so let's start by the stats overview widget and as the name suggests this is basically used to display some stats of our application so i'll start by copying this command and paste that here php and make filament widget stats overview the type here is the stats overview widget I'll hit enter and what is the resource you'd like to create this in i don't want to assign this to any resource so i'll just hit enter and i want to create this inside the admin panel because i only have that panel for now let's go to that stats overview widget and here what i want to do is okay i'll just copy these and paste them here and we don't have to import this because this is imported already and here i want to display the total classes total sections and total students related data and instead of passing this static value what i want to do is i want to grab the classes model and call the count let's import the model and here i want to display the section related data let's import the model app models section and here as you might have guessed we will be displaying the total students data let's import the model let's save that and since we have already looked into the code in the admin panel provider the widgets inside filament widgets will be automatically discovered and if you go ahead and look into the namespace as you can see we have app filament widgets so this should be discovered automatically and since we have not assigned this to any resource so this should be automatically displayed on the dashboard so let's go ahead and give this a refresh if i reload then as you can see total classes total sections and total students data is displayed on the dashboard okay let's also go ahead and look into the table widget so i'll just switch to that tab again and let's look into this table widget and for the chart widget we'll be looking at that later uh, we'll be diving deep into the chart widgets as well so the type here is table widget and i'll just copy this command and paste that here make filament widget and i want to display the latest students related data here and the type is going to be table hit enter and i don't want to attach this to any resource so i'll just hit enter and i want to create this inside the admin panel so yeah let's go to that 
latest students widget and here so here the query is going to be return student query i want to get the latest data and on on limit the data by five okay and let's import the student model the class is already imported but why is this giving an error here let's see syntax error unexpected token student what's happening maybe we don't have to use and okay we also don't need that and for the columns we can basically pass the columns that we want to display here just like we do in the table method so let's go ahead and look into the student resource and i'll just copy that code and paste that here because it's basically the same so these are the data that i want to display so i'll just go ahead and paste that here make sure to import the classes let's go ahead and give this a refresh click on reload and okay, we need to fix the width of this but the functionality is working fine as you can see so to change the width of this what we can do is let's go ahead and look into this base widget class and here we have let's see interacts with actions interact with forms info lists interacts with table view heading paginate table get table heading okay i'm not sure where is that so i'll just try to override that directly because i already know how to do that so i'll just do it and you can go ahead and look into the documentation that's probably covered in there as well so we have a property called column span that we can override and i'll just go ahead and paste that here i want a column span of full so i'll just save that and let's reload and as you can see this will take the full width of the page and the pagination is enabled but what i want to do here is i want to display this widget at the top and this widget at the bottom so we can override a property for this which is called sort so i'll just go ahead and overwrite that and the one which has the lowest number will be displayed at the top so i want to display this at the bottom so i'll just go ahead and assign this a value of two i'll save this and for the stats overview i'll assign a value of one let's save that and let's go ahead and reload and now as you can see the widgets are displayed at the top and the table widget is displayed at the bottom okay so this was a general overview about customizing the dashboard you can further go ahead and look into the documentation for customizing the dashboard by extending from the base dashboard and then overriding the default behavior and then you can go ahead and pass the dashboard class your custom implementation of the dashboard class in this method so yeah that's how you override the default behavior and in the next part we will be looking at fixing some validation related issues so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one okay it's time to implement some validations and when i want to create a new class then I don't want to create a class that already exists on the database so for that what we'll be doing is we'll be making use of the unique validation rule so it's, uh, class one already exists so to prevent creation of a class of the same name we need to apply the unique validation rule so let's go ahead and apply that rule on the class resource so uh, we want to apply the validation for the name attribute because we only have this attribute in this class model so i'll pass this unique validation rule to this and required is also necessary so i'll just append that here let's save this and let's go ahead and give this a try click on create class i'll try to type class one and since we are applying the unique validations we should not be able to create 
a class that already exists in the database and as you can see the validation is taking place but there's one issue with this that is if i go ahead and try to edit this data and without making any changes uh, since this already exists in the database so if i click on save then as you can see i cannot update this data because this record is not ignored by default so we need to fix that and we can do that by passing the parameter uh, in this unique method if you go ahead and look into the underlying method then we have the table we can pass the table we can pass the column we can pass whether this is ignorable or not and we can pass whether this should be ignored or not and we can even pass this modify rule using which can be either null or a closure so if, yeah we will be overriding this ignore record parameter let's go ahead and pass that ignore record parameter and i'll pass that as true because by default the ignore record is false so let's save this and let's now go ahead and reload and click on save and now as you can see the data is saved successfully and if i want to create a new data with the same name then i won't be able to create that okay so this has been fixed but i also want to go one level deeper and implement one more validation that is on the sections related data so let's say i have section a section b and section c which is in here i think yep so i have section a and section b for class one so i want to implement a validation where for this specific class i don't want to let the user create the section that already exists in the database so we can do that by making use of this unique validation rule and we'll be passing this ignore record as true and we'll also make use of this modify rule using parameter so we'll pass our own custom validation constraint to this so yeah let's go ahead and do that so on the section resource let's go to that section resource and here we have this name let's start with the unique validation rule let's pass the ignore record as true and for the modifier rule using what we will do is we will pass in a function since that accepts a closure we'll pass a function where we'll inject the getter that we have used in the previous videos as well to implement the dependent drop down let's go ahead and import that and we'll also get the unique rule validation in here and okay let's import this unique from eliminate validation rules unique and here we will return the rule where the class id is the class id that we get from this select component okay let's save this and what's happening here is we are creating the section we are ignoring the record that we are currently updating and we are also modifying the existing rule by passing this getter and this is used to get the class id which is from this select component and we are passing this unique rule so this unique rule is provided by laravel and we are overriding the behavior and we only want to trigger the validation if the section name for this class id doesn't exist so yeah let's go ahead and give this a try and there are cases where you might need to implement something like this so that's the reason i'm showing you uh, this validation so let's go ahead and give this a try now i'll just reload and create a new section for class one i already have section a so since we have already applied the rule so we should not be able to create section a for this class 
click on create and as you can see the name has already been taken section c has also been taken so yeah that's working if i create section d so this doesn't exist in the database so we should be able to successfully create this if i click on create then as you can see the data is now created successfully and since we are passing that ignore record to true then we should be able to update this record that has been currently updated so if i click on save then the data is saved in the database so yeah this thing is now working properly and what else do we have okay so we are almost done for this video and in the next part we'll be looking at working with pdfs in filament so uh, tasks like these could be a bit tricky because we are working with filament and yeah there's not much stuff about dealing with these situations so yeah i'll show you a workaround and you'll be able to work with pdf generation and filament based applications so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one okay in this video we'll be working on dealing with pdf generations in filament based applications and i won't show you the whole process of adding styles or creating the pdfs and everything in general but i will show you the process about how we can implement pdf generations in filament based applications and i will let you know the process that you can apply to generate uh, pdfs based on a certain record so here we have the students management system that we implemented in the first section of our course and the general behavior that i want to implement here is we will create a custom action which will say something like generate qr code or download qr code for the record and when the user clicks on it then we'll open a new tab and in that tab we'll basically uh, display some data on the pdf and how you want to display it what are the calculations that you want to perform your business needs but i'll just show you the flow and you'll get an idea about how we can deal with pdf generations for filament based applications once you go through this video so for generating the pdfs i'll be using a package called laravel invoices so this is basically a simple wrapper for generating invoices based on dom pdf and a few uh, pdf generating packages so yeah we'll be making use of this and this eliminates the overhead of creating pdfs and working with the design so this package is actually useful for creating invoices related data so we'll be creating invoices of our records and display them uh, in the pdf format so yeah let's start by installing the package i'll just run this composer require laravel daily laravel invoices command in our vs codes integrated terminal okay let me copy that properly composer require laravel daily laravel invoices let's go ahead and paste the command and hit enter and while this is installing let's go ahead and look into the process we also need to run this php artisan invoices install and we can basically create uh, a new buyer and that buyer is being passed to this invoices model and finally we are returning this invoice stream which will basically render the pdf with the data that we pass through this model so yeah we will be looking into this dummy implementation and this video is not about how we can generate pdf but about how we can process and stream pdf in a filament based application so yeah we'll be looking into this but let's first go ahead and look into our installation so the package is installed let's now go ahead and define a new controller which will basically be responsible for uh, generating and handling the pdfs so let's create a new controller called pdf maybe we can call this invoices controller since we are generating invoices in here so i'll call it invoices controller hit enter let's go to that controller and i'll define a method in here called download 
or maybe we can call it generate PDF. So let's do that generate PDF and we'll receive a record which is going to be of type student. So if you go ahead and look into our project, here we are dealing with the student's record. So yeah, we'll pass the record that we are currently editing from here and we'll grab that through root model binding and that gets injected in our controller. So we'll pass that as a dependency injection. So let's define that and let's also import the model. And here let's go ahead and paste some dummy examples that is provided here. So I'll just copy this code and paste that here. And okay, let's now go ahead and fill up some data in here. Let's see. The buyer should be imported from the invoices package, and the invoice item should also be imported. Invoice should also be imported from Laravel daily invoices invoice. Laravel daily invoices facades invoice. Okay, let's see. Invoices invoice. So yeah, that's the class and the buyer here is customer that we will be displaying the data about so in this case it's going to be student so i'll just remove this part and okay maybe instead of removing it what we can do is we can pass in the name and okay the buyer is a model provided by the laravel daily invoices package so yeah we need this the name here is going to be the students name and custom fields okay let's also display the email that we are currently dealing with student email and for the service one we are creating a invoice item price per unit is two for this customer we can overwrite that with student okay discount by person 10 tax rate shipping add item item so these are all the classes provided by invoices and we are just using them as a helper to generate the pdfs okay that's done let's now go ahead and register a new route so i'll open web.php and define a new route which is going to be of type get and i'm going to name it let's pass the student model first student pdf okay this should be inside the single quotes pdf okay let's call generate and the controller is gonna be the invoices controller and the method here is generate pdf if we command click on it we do get this go to completion by our ide and the name here is generate pdf but this is not working so okay that's working now let's save this let's also give this a name of student.pdf.generate or you can call this invoice so i'll also update that with invoice and let's now go to our student resource and define a new custom action in the table method so here we have okay not on the table method but inside the actions method we are passing in array so we only have this edit action by default and we'll add a new custom action so let's start by defining a new action in here action make and i'm going to name this download pdf and let's also go ahead and look into the filament documentation for the actions so i've opened that in my browser and here we have this dummy action implemented name here is send email the form is also passed and the action here is to send an email but we won't be rendering a form or defining this action in this case but what we will be doing is we'll be defining a url which will basically redirect us to the route that we just defined and we'll pass in the record that the user selects to download the pdf for so let's say in this case uh, the user wants to download the pdf for this record so when the user clicks on download pdf then we want to send this record along with the action so yeah we will be doing that so i'll 
define this url method here and i'll also pass in the function which will let us inject the current record that is being clicked in that specific row and what we can do here is we can basically return the url so if we go ahead and look into our documentation let's look into the url method function string we should return a route and this is also passing in the record so yeah let's go ahead and implement this so we need to return a route and in this case we want to return this route that we just generated and this also expects this student model so yeah let's format this properly and return the route student.invoice.generate and we also need to pass in the student model and to make sure that this thing is working properly let's go ahead and dd the record that we get through root model binding and let's go ahead and give this a try now so i'll go ahead and reload our students index page and more method filament actions action table does not exist okay let's go ahead and look into our vs code so i think this is giving us an error this should be filament tables actions action let's save that and let's go ahead and reload and okay now we have this download pdf link or a custom action in our students table and if i click on it then we get the record that is currently being edited if we go ahead and look into our route we have an id of one and here as well we have an id of one so yeah this thing is working fine so the only thing left here to test out is this block of code which is basically the code provided by invoices package so yeah let's save this and let's go ahead and reload once and if i click on download pdf then as you can see the pdf got rendered and let's try to look into the name okay kathleen bergstrom email is rmayor at the rate example.com if we go ahead and look into the record that is of id1 then as you can see we are getting the correct email and the correct name for this so yeah this flow is now working properly and i also felt like this took some time to implement it but i also hope that you learn some new stuff along the way and in the next video we'll be looking at working with qr codes in filament based applications so we'll define a custom action to view a qr code and we'll also pass the record that is currently being edited so yeah that flow is also almost similar to this and yeah we'll be working on that in the next video okay in this video we'll be looking at uh, generating qr codes in filament based applications and we'll be making use of the custom pages feature provided by filament to render the qr code generated by us so i yeah, will be making use of the custom pages register the page accordingly and also use the record uh, to display some relevant data uh, in the qr code and we'll also make use of a package called this simple software io simple qr code to generate the qr codes so yeah let's start by installing this package first and then we'll be looking at generating and rendering the qr codes the filament way so okay we do have a documentation page for this so let's open that up and let's start by installing this package okay so composer require simple software qr code this is also passing this version 4 to the package so i'll just copy this whole command and paste that in our code editor and while that is happening what we can do is we can basically run this code to generate a qr code for this data so we can pass in any data that we want to encode in the qr code in this parameter uh, inside the generate method and we'll be using this wrapper provided by filament 
so yeah let's go ahead and now look into our code editor the package is installed let's go ahead and define a new custom action so just like we did in the pdf generation section we'll define a new action which will basically redirect us to a new url and from that we will generate the qr code so yeah let's start by defining a new action i'll just copy this action and paste that here for the url instead of returning this what we will be doing is we will get the url through the this resource itself so i will be working on this but let's first work on our name of the action because we are, have the same name here so the name for the action is going to be okay let's name it qr code and for this we'll be looking into the filament documentation first so on the custom pages section inside the table builder resources we have a custom pages page and here we can define custom pages for any of our resources so yeah to create a new custom page we need to pass this php artisan make filament page the name of the page here is sort users the resource that we want to attach this page to is user resource and the type is custom so i'll copy this command and paste that in our terminal and make the changes as per our needs so the resource here is the student resource and the name here is generate qr code let's hit enter and this is going to create a new page inside the student resource pages namespace and we also need to register that in the get pages method so okay let's first go into this generate qr code page and the view that is passed here is the filament resources student resource pages generate qr code so we'll be populating this blade view accordingly and in the mount this is calling the static authorize resource access method and the page is attached to this student resource class so yeah let's go ahead and first register this page in our resource so in the get pages method of our resource we can pass this and we can even pass the record that is currently being edited uh, through this method as you can see we have this using a resource record and the documentation says that if you want to create a page that uses a record similar to the edit or view page we can use the interacts with record trade so let's go ahead and copy that and include that in our custom page let's import that from filament resources pages concerns interacts with record and on the mount what we can do is we can grab the record in our string record and yeah, we can basically assign this record which will be resolved internally by filament so yeah let's save this and we have not yet registered this in our student resource so yeah, let's go ahead and look into that so let's say we have this manage page and to also pass in the record we need to call something like this just like we do in our web.php route file so i'll just copy this and modify this as per our needs so on the get pages let's go ahead and define this page our custom page in this case it's going to be qr code the name here uh, of the page and this is going to be generate qr code route here is going to be record slash qr code let's save that and let's now go ahead and return this page from our custom action that we just defined here and to render this custom page that is this qr code page from the custom action we can make use of the static get url method so i will call the static and get url 
and we'll pass in the name of our page so in this case it's qr code so i'll pass that in and since this page also expects a record as you can see in here so we also need to pass that record so i'll pass the student record here and let's save this and for some reason we are getting a warning here and i think we need to name this variable as record so let's try to do that since we are passing that as a record in here so yeah that could be the reason let's go ahead and give this a try and if there are any issues then we'll fix them along the way if i go ahead and reload okay filament resources resource get url argument to parameters must be of type array app model students given call in the student resource or php so this expects a type of array so let's wrap this inside an array and pass that okay on our action custom action we have this record so i'll pass that as an array let's save that and let's go ahead and reload okay as you can see our page rendered successfully now and we have this download pdf you also have qr code and we don't have any links for this so if i click on this nothing is happening so yeah we need to look into that what's happening here if i go ahead and dd the record let's see what we get in here reload and click on qr code and still nothing is happening okay one silly mistake that we did here was we need to return this instead of just uh, passing this uh, like a parameter so yeah, we need to return that and if we now go ahead and click on qr code then we get the record as one so yeah let's go ahead and remove this dd and if i go ahead and now reload then as you can see we uh, get this page rendered the name here is generate qr code that's basically coming from this page name so you can go ahead and override that and what i want to do in this page is i want to render the qr code and to access the current record uh, that we are passing from here we can use let's look into the documentation we can call this get record and we can access the record that we are passing through so yeah, let's go ahead and display the qr code let's look into the documentation to uh, render the qr code we can use this code so let's go ahead and look into the page that is this generate qr code page blade file that was generated uh, by the custom page command i'll paste the code that i just copied and for some reason i'm not getting some auto completions in here but yeah let's see generate qr code i want to provide a size of 100 and the record that i want to generate here is this get record this will grab the record that we are currently passing from the custom page and i want to render the name in this case let's save that and if we now go ahead and reload then as you can see the qr code is rendered let's say if i want to render the email of the user and i also want to var dump that this get record email let's save that and let's reload then as you can see the email is also rendered and the qr code also updated accordingly so yeah this flow is also working fine and i hope that this was also helpful to you and yeah in the next part we'll be working on implementing custom login behavior in filament based applications so yeah we'll be working on that in the next video okay in this video we'll be looking at implementing the custom login behavior in filament based applications and there might be cases where you have to implement a custom login behavior 
like implement a login activity whenever the user logs in or enable the user login by either username or email address so the default behavior uh, can be a bit limiting sometimes based on the business needs so yeah we'll be looking at how we can override the default behavior that comes with filament and to understand that let's go ahead and look into the implementation first so on the admin panel provider so based on the panel provider that is currently being used we have to make the necessary changes on that specific panel so in this case we have this admin panel provider which is the default panel that comes installed with filament so we only have this one and since we are changing the default login behavior for this panel so we'll be making the necessary changes in this class itself and this login method that is being passed to this panel enables the login feature and if we go ahead and look into this underlying class then as you can see this either accepts a string a closure or an array of data or null and the action is the parameter name and by default this login class is been passed so if we don't pass anything to this login method then this class will be used by default so yeah let's go ahead and look into this class and most of the stuff is implemented here so the data is an empty array by default in the mount method this is basically checking whether the user is currently authenticated if it is not then it will fill the form and this is a live bar component so we do have these mount and other goodies that LiveWire offers and this authenticate method is basically responsible for authenticating the user and this will basically try to log in and if it is error then it will display the necessary notification and try to log the user in and finally this will return this login response class and here uh, we have this get forms method which is basically grabbing the form fields like the email form component password form component and the remember me form component so we can go ahead and override these methods and whatever we pass from there will be used in our login flow and for the get email this is passing in a text input with these values the type is emailed the validations are implemented and for the password as well as you can see this is passing in a password autocomplete is set to current password required and the extra input attributes are also passed the remember component is the checkbox and the register action is responsible for registering the user if it is enabled the get title method is basically responsible for the title property heading is used on top of the login page and form actions this is passing in the get authenticate form action which is okay this one so this is the action that is going to be executed when the user clicks on login and there are some additional stuffs for the page width and credentials so these are the credentials that will be used to authenticate the user so to implement our own custom behavior what we will be doing is we'll be overriding uh, the default login class and pass our own implementation so yeah let's go ahead and define a new login class and we will override some behaviors from this class and pass that class to this login method so yeah let's open our file explorer and inside filament let's define a new login class and i'll define that inside pages and okay let's try to look into the namespace in here we have this login class inside filament pages auth so yeah we'll also do the same in our case so inside filament okay not in here but inside this folder filament let's create pages inside that we'll create auth and inside that let's create a login class and 
here let's define this php class let's define the namespace app filament pages app filament pages and inside that we have auth and this is giving us some errors okay let's see what error we have in here app filament pages auth is empty okay let's define the class now class login extends the filament login and i will be aliasing this so let's import this login class and i think we need to rename this to something else let's say login one two three and i'll name this login and then try to import that from the filament pages auth login and now namespace this as filament login and let's also update this accordingly and now we can name this as login and here what we can do is we can override the stuff that we want to implement uh, in our custom login behavior so yeah let's go ahead and look into this and for this case what i want to do is instead of letting the user login via their email what i want to do is i want to let them log in with the username so yeah let's start by defining the migration file artisan make migration create okay not create but add username field to users table and let's also pass in the table option the table here is going to be users let's go to that class and define the migration table string username unique nullable after email okay that makes sense let's also define the down method table drop column username and let's go ahead and run the migration now that ran successfully now let's go ahead and implement our custom login class so here instead of overriding all of these methods what we can do is we can override this get email form component method because instead of passing the email we want to pass the username field and everything else is going to be same and we also need to override the credentials from form data method because we'll be passing the username instead of the email so yeah let's copy this method paste that here instead of passing the email we'll be passing the username and let's also override this get email form component method go ahead and paste that and instead of text input email this is gonna be username let's import this text input component and let's also import this component from okay let's see what kind of component this is okay it's a filament forms components component so let's import this as well filament forms components component label is gonna be okay let's let's pass our own label in here this is gonna be username and we don't need the type of email this is required we can auto complete it we can auto focus it and we can pass in the extra input attributes of tab index one let's save this and you can also go ahead and override some other methods based on your needs like the get title and get heading methods but i'll just keep it like this for now and to actually uh, implement this login we also need to pass this login class in our admin panel provider so let's pass that in here login class let's import this login class from the correct namespace filament app filament pages auth login let's save this and okay to implement the login feature we also need to populate our username column on the users table but first let's try to log out and now as you can see the username is displayed on the login page 
so yeah this flow is working and the sign in flow should be broken right now because we are not passing in the username but passing an email so if i click on sign in okay we don't get any errors but we are not signed in as well so yeah we need to work on that so let's go to our database and okay i'm logged out click on login and on the users model we have this username okay this is filament students management okay we already have the username so i think i used an old database here i'm not sure okay this is the one filament student management this is an older one okay on the users we have this username i'll pass a username of admin and let's now go ahead and try to log in by passing in admin password is password click on sign in and now as you can see we are logged in successfully so yeah this login flow is also working fine and yeah we are almost done for this video as well and if there are any other features that i find interesting then i'll probably cover them in the future so yeah that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one